And okay, here we go. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Coast. I'm the IB Diploma Program Coordinator here at Meridian. I have with me tonight Josh Singer. He's one of our two TOK teachers. He teaches students, uh, seniors currently in periods one and four TOK. Dr. DeFazio has the morning session for the seniors. And of course, our junior parents, your students will be transitioning to those two teachers as we move into the second semester this year. We also have with us Ms. Jamie Sample. She coordinates our creativity, activity, and service requirements for the IB Diploma, CAS, we call it, as well as the extended essay, also affectionately known as EE. And she coordinates both of those for us. You're going to be hearing from both of those professionals tonight. And hopefully, as we step through the IB diploma requirements, uh, we'll have three opportunities, three breaks to uh, ask questions. Uh, first, starting with uh, Josh, he'll be talking about TOK and any question you may have. And then we'll go to Jamie. She'll talk about CAS extended essay, opportunity to ask questions about that all occur. And then I'll go into the exam and course requirements uh, and we'll talk about that at the end too with any questions you may have. Uh, if you would put questions into the chat, I have uh, Mr. Singer right now kind of monitoring that and though we may not break in our presentations, as I said, there'll be three opportunities throughout to go to that chat and answer any questions that you may have that are for the good of the of the whole. So understand the IB diploma, I think everybody here gets it. Uh, we have IB diploma, uh, diploma uh, classes occurring in the final two years of high school. Now, having said that, we do have some sophomores who jump into an IB language in some cases, more frequently into an IB math. So we do have some students in IB classes in the sophomore year, though they're not testing or taking the IB exams that is in the sophomore year. Uh, they will do that in the junior year after a two year stint in the class. But typically it's for students in the last two years of high school. Of course, the coursework is extremely helpful in preparing students for college. And I don't base that on all the IB literature and propaganda they send me, um, but I really base that on the, I've been doing this since 2003 and I've been visiting with the diploma recipients at this school and another school since then that come back from their first semester of college. And you know that's my testimony to how well students are prepared for the college is what the students come back and tell me. Uh, and of course, college admissions officers, I actually have two seniors right now. Unfortunately, they do not go to an IB high school, but as you can imagine, if I've been going through all these college visits with them, I do ask about IB. And I can tell you all the responses I get is very, very favorable. Uh, the kind of rigor that kids have and the preparedness students have uh, for college through the IB program. Now, currently uh, our junior class has 60 students that are going for the IB diploma. Um, and currently our senior class has 67. Uh, both of these actually are the two largest classes we've had going for the IB diploma. I don't think we've gone over 54 students prior to this last uh, year. So uh, this is really a nice uh, testimony. And I think the, what's so wonderful about working in this city is that we do have so many students really stretching themselves to uh, take on the most academic rigor they can challenge themselves with. And then we have this strong cohort of students who support each other and encourage each other to consider an IB diploma. I, I would argue the numbers you see before you, yes, there's some great teachers, there's a great curriculum, uh, but it's really the students, I think, encouraging each other uh, and, and be, to be successful with this program. Um, I don't know if the, you guys can see, let me move this out of my way anyway, some uh, pictures of folks. Um, the IB Diploma, of course, you got to have six exam subjects, and they've got to be one in each group. If you look at the model here in front of you, starting at the top, we have studies in language and literature for most all our students, of course, that's English. And then you have your language acquisition. We have French, we have Spanish, we have Mandarin. But around the wheel, you see the six different subject areas and students must take an exam in each of those. We're gonna talk quite a bit about that near the end of this uh, slide deck. And then of course you have the core and the core is seen here in this ring, uh, with the theory of knowledge. We, it's a class that students take uh, second semester of the junior year and first semester of the senior year to meet the TOK requirements. There's no exam for that course, but uh, Mr. Singer will be here to tell you more about that in just a second. Of course, the extended essay is part of the core. 
students do write their own papers over the course of their last two years here, hopefully uh, closer to the beginning of their senior year they're finishing rather than uh, mid-year. But Ms. Sample will talk about that and creativity, um, uh, actually it's now called activity and service also make up part of the core. And students must complete the TOK class, the extended essay, and CAS requirements in order to be eligible for a diploma in addition to the six subjects. So if I may go to the next slide. So the core is again, creativity, activity, service, extended essay, TOK. And we're gonna move this right on over to TOK. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Singer to take over at this point and tell you a little bit about that class and the requirements and the, the timeline for meeting those requirements for an IB diploma. Awesome, thank you very much, Dan. And thank you everyone for joining us here tonight. Uh, Dan, if you could uh, advance to the next slide for me and one more time. Um, so here you can see a graphic of what is in essence our TOK curriculum. Um, and as is similar in a lot of IB images, uh, we start in the center. So uh, where we start with TOK is who are we as knowers? Uh, and how do we know what we know? Um, in that aspect, we talk about the reliability of our ways of knowing, things like our memory or our sense perception, our ability to reason, um, our emotions. Um, and as we grapple with you know, who we are as knowers and some of the strengths and limitations that come with that, we then explore that through the areas of knowledge and the optional themes. So the areas of knowledge, which you can see in the top part of this diagram, are your academic disciplines. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of overlap between those areas of knowledge and then those six diploma program uh, areas. Um, in the bottom section there, that's where you see these optional themes. And uh, those are the things about us, the things that can shape our perspectives about the world uh, and might lead us to different conclusions um, about what we know. Uh, later on, we will actually be sharing the slide deck with you uh, and along with the video. And if you want to know a little bit more about the course, there's uh, a video link down there uh, at the bottom, which is gonna talk a little bit more about, about what we shared here tonight. And one more time, please. Awesome. So here uh, at Meridian, uh, we focus the course through the big question format. Uh, and this is using a very popular curriculum throughout IB schools uh, worldwide, and that is the theoryofknowledge.net uh, curriculum. And, and what they've done is they've uh, taken that um, curriculum that you saw in the last slide, uh, and they've kind of repackaged it around six big questions. Uh, the ones in blue are the ones that we study in the junior year. Uh, and after a brief introduction of the course in January, uh, um, we begin right away with, you know, what is this course and why do we study it and, and get into that idea of, well, what is knowledge? Um, what are the historical definitions of knowledge? Uh, what does it mean to say something is truth? How do we come to uh, knowing what is true uh, about the world? Um, from there, we move into units on values and spin. Uh, in values, we talk about the intersection between art and ethics. Uh, in spin, we talk a whole lot about um, what bias is, how bias can play into the way that uh, information can be manipulated. We talk about uh, the role of language in the development of our knowledge. And then you can see down there in the uh, you know, uh, pink or, or reddish color, uh, the three big questions that we look at for the second year. So our seniors actually are wrapping up that first big question in Q4 on perspectives uh, here uh, this week. And from there, uh, in, in addition to some of the bigger assessments that we'll be talking about uh, momentarily, uh, we'll be navigating into BQ5 and BQ6. Overall, um, ID expects that all students learn about that core theme, um, knowledge and the knower, and then that they're exposed to two areas of knowledge and then two of those optional themes. Uh, through this BQ6 format, we lean heavily into art, we lean heavily into uh, science, we lean heavily into uh, history, uh, and we dabble a little bit into human sciences and math as well. 
Uh, additionally, when it comes to the optional themes, looking at two primarily, uh, a lot of these BQs focus on technology or they focus on language or they focus on politics. Now, when we get into what the course is just generally about, um, one, of, one of the big uh, pieces about the course is this idea of a knowledge question. And here you can see some examples. So a knowledge question is a question that is about knowledge. Uh, it's something that's contestable. There's not gonna be a right or a wrong answer. And it's gonna link to one of the 12 TOK concepts that we weave throughout uh, our time together. Uh, concepts like certainty, interpretation, power, um, objectivity, uh, just to name a few of them. So what we try to do in the course is through real life situations, and those could be situations that are happening in their diploma program classes or situations that are happening in the world around us, we try and take that specific situation and derive from it a knowledge question. So, you know, here you can see a few examples uh, uh, of that. Right. Uh, so in an IB history class, um, like the one that I teach many of your juniors in, you know, we're going to look at different historical perspectives and we're going to analyze what those historians might be saying. Um, in, our, in, in the TOK class, now we're going to talk about, well, as historians, how do we decide between the judgments of experts uh, when they come to different conclusions? Uh, in that next line there, you can see another great example. Um, the way that mathematics can be used to make predictions about population growth in parts of the world. Um, and then we in TOK will talk about, well, even if a model is incomplete or is gonna have um, falsity you know, inherent in it, how do we still, how useful are they uh, into our development of knowledge? And so the final kind of big idea regarding the TOK um, are the two assessments. So on the left, you can see the TOK exhibition. On the right, you can see the TOK essay. Uh, in IB speak, the TOK exhibition is our internal assessment. It means the students are working on it uh, here at Meridian, and it will be assessed by myself or Dr. DeFazio uh, for the students in the morning TOK course. Uh, the students have a choice of one of 35 different prompts. Um, and our seniors actually, their, their exhibitions are due this week as well. So um, our seniors are wrapping that up right now. Um, this is the first year that IB has switched to an exhibition um, as the internal assessment. And so as Dr. DeFazio and I are reflecting on kind of the overall approach to the course, uh, we're potentially gonna be shifting that to May for our junior year, but we'll definitively be communicating that out at the beginning of the course, uh, if that is the move that we're gonna make. Ultimately, think of the exhibition like thinking about going to a museum. Um, and the idea is that the student is identifying three objects that have a real world context um, and trying to demonstrate how those objects reflect what they what the prompt is asking them uh, to reflect upon. Okay, so how um, TOK might manifest itself in the world around us. The TOK essay is the external assessment. So that's something we work on uh, at Meridian, but ultimately gets shipped off to IB examiners around the world um, and evaluated outside of our school. Uh, students will be presented with one of six titles, that's IB speak for a question or a prompt. Um, and over the course of December and January in their senior year, they will meet with their teacher uh, three times. First to identify what prompt or, or sorry, what title uh, they're interested in exploring. Uh, second to share uh, what they're thinking about that title is and, and an outline if they've worked up to that. And then finally to kind of review and, and get holistic feedback, feedback on a draft. Uh, and what we're looking for there is the mechanics of great writing, uh, just, just with a, an essay about, about knowledge. So are they providing a clear, coherent uh, and critical exploration uh, of the essay title? The BQ6 format that we use, um, is designed very much so to help prepare students for success on both of these items throughout those BQs. Uh, we dabble in exhibitions. You know, we used, uh, for example, I, I think it was in, in BQ2, we used um, a carryout box 
um, and talked about how this not only represents the real life context of living through uh, a global pandemic when so much of our food was being delivered to us in boxes, but also then relates to uh, knowledge issues regarding our values, uh, regarding our perspectives, regarding our culture. Um, and so we experiment with that in, in class. Uh, in regards to the TOK essay, you know, everything we're doing is preparing students for success on that. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, the students will have that choice of, of their title. And then beginning around uh, Thanksgiving, we start introducing them to the, to the overall essay. Um, we grade sample essays. We look at a lot of sample essays. And then we set the kids off to, to work on their own. Uh, so at this time, if there are, you know, questions, quick questions uh, related to, to what I just shared, I, I'd be happy to take a few of those um, and then turn it over uh, back to Dan. Josh, I haven't opened up the chat, but maybe if there's something there or not. Yeah, so so I see one in there. Um, when do students take TOK? So students at Meridian take TOK starting in the second semester of their junior year. Uh, so our IB diploma students, most of them have uh, a study hall or supervised study this semester. Uh, and then they'll, they'll come to Al or I, uh, Dr. DeFazio or I in the spring semester. Uh, for TOK. And then they have us in the fall of their senior year uh, and typically then uh, end up with um, senior study or uh, open campus uh, in the spring of their senior year as they prepare for uh, their IB exams. Um, uh, to Mr. Shin's question, can I share past questions or examples uh, of questions for past year essays? I, I don't want to derail our oh, thank momentum you. here. Uh, so let me see if I can pull one up here uh, while uh, we're moving forward. And I'd be happy to throw in a few um, sample prompts uh, for the internal assessment and then maybe an, an old uh, external assessment uh, question. But uh, the good news is, right, as soon as these things are made available to us, we get them out there to the kids and, and we really do work with them on how do we break down the questions uh, uh, to what really uh, is the key idea so that they can be as prepared as possible for answering them. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Singer. Um, certainly you can always reach out to myself or the TLK teachers directly, and uh, we'll continue to ask any questions that may come along uh, as your students pursue that course. But again, that is gonna be a require, requirement of all TLK students, and students ultimately from IB will get a score of, actually not a number score, they actually get a grade of A through E, and why that's important, I will discuss uh, by, when I talk about the diploma requirements here in just a bit. No sit down exam in TOK, like, unlike all the other classes in ID, seems. Let's talk about uh, CAS, and I'm going to turn over to Ms. Sample, our CAS coordinator, and she then will follow up immediately with extended essay discussion, and she will open up the floor to any questions concerning CAS or extended essay that you may have. Jamie, are you ready? I am, thank you, Mr. Coast. All right, so um, I have the great joy of supervising our juniors and seniors through the two aspects of the diploma process that they have the most control over, that they have the most say in, that hopefully reflect the culmination of what is their diploma process, but also is the culmination of, for many of them, their IB journey through our Falls Church City Schools. So let's talk about creativity, activity, and service. Creativity, activity, and service um, is a portfolio we put together in ManageBack. So if you haven't already heard about this wonderful platform, it's something that we um, have. A, it's a great tool for our diploma students. And we use ManageBack to document and reflect upon the activities and experiences that our, student, our students choose to have. So creativity, activity, and service our experiences that the students are choosing. We're talking about their ensembles, their private lessons, their expressive platforms, 
be they audio, visual, um, drama, dance. Also, the different ways that they choose to share what they know and what they're learning, um, what they are experiencing. So sometimes creativity can look like being the Instagram account manager for a club or a team that they're involved in. Activity, um, IB defend, defines this as getting sweaty with intention, okay? And then service, the ways that we choose to serve in an authentic way. These are the embodiments of their IB diploma experience outside of the classroom. And a lot of times we will see them reflecting upon those learner traits. So, no, no, that's all right, Mr. Coast, we'll go right ahead. Cool. So for CAS, the requirements for CAS, we expect to see our students involved in CAS experiences three to four hours per week throughout their diploma process, junior and senior year. And for those of you that have student athletes, you know that they are doing above and beyond that, even just in one sports season, okay? So as we go through that, we ask them to consider, what is it that you hope to achieve? In your, as part of your involvement in this experience. So for the CAS portfolio, we have these seven learning outcomes. And for each experience that they choose to reflect upon, we ask them to choose a minimum of one learning outcome and as many as all seven. So when you look at these learning outcomes, you'll see that they apply to a variety of experiences, identifying strengths and developing areas for growth, uh, demonstrate that challenges have been undertaken, develop new skills, initiating and planning, commitment and perseverance, collaboration, global significance, and ethics of choices and actions. So not just that we choose to be part of these experiences, but why do we choose to be part of those experiences and how do they affect us, not just as an athlete, not just as a musician, not just as a writer, not just as a person who wants to serve others, but how do they impact us as the whole person? And these learning outcomes give students the opportunity to reflect on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So CAS criteria, what makes something relevant for CAS? So first of all, real purposeful activities with significant outcomes. These words are from our uh, IB diploma guidelines. So with significant outcomes, so it's not just that we did something, but that we are aware of the impact of that something, be that the impact on the student, the close community, the greater community. Okay. Personal challenge. So did we try something? Did we try something more? Were we a risk taker? Uh, was this something that we had to really um, involve ourselves in, in a significant way? thoughtful consideration, okay? So did, we didn't just fall into it, but we chose this activity and that we reflect again upon how it impacts us and our learning. So there are lots and lots of ways for students to be involved in CAS at Meridian. And you'll see some examples here in front of you. Um, so creativity, um, our students that are involved in symphonic band, wind ensemble, chamber singers, concert choir, um, theater productions, uh, our art clubs. And even if they're choosing to take an art class that is not IB art, if they're choosing to take ceramics or photography, if they're involved in the lasso, if they are coaching, how is coaching creative? So creativity is defined as you make something and you share it. So these students that are creating workouts for their young athletes, especially during COVID when they would create videos and share those with their players so that they could help them understand what they were trying to achieve. If you make it and you share it, it is creativity, okay? So robotics club, mock trial as they develop their arguments for various cases. Looking at activity, so activity, physical exertion with intention. Okay, so not just that we got sweaty doing something, but why did we get sweaty? Uh, are we trying to improve our overall fitness? Are we trying to improve our overall wellness? So sometimes it's not just that we have reached a specific physical goal, but that we are aware of the necessity of activity for our overall mental health. So you'll see yoga there, um, sometimes from students, We'll see walking or running or cycling or skating programs um, that they have developed and that are supervised by 
coaches or our athletic director, or even just with a teacher that they have a strong connection with about that activity. Service can take so many forms, and it's good to know that in this time where we are still dealing with so many of the issues of COVID, keeping in mind that service can be direct, indirect, research, and advocacy. So our service can take lots of different forms, and sometimes um, we will see the combinations of service and creativity when a student has felt the need to perform a form of service, and we say, okay, Look around your community. What do you see as a need? And reaching out to some of our established organizations or communities that maybe need a voice and saying, okay, so I see that this is going on. What's causing this need? How do we serve them? Sharing that information sometimes with our city council or with other forums to say, hey, I think that this is something that we need to be aware of or looking at. Um, and those are some of the most beautiful manifestations of our CAS pro program. Okay, what CAS is not? A one and done service related activity. Now, this one's on the top of the list, but I do wanna clarify this. A one and done service related activity is not CAS because we just fell into it and we don't really pay attention to it afterwards. So last Saturday was Farm Day and several of our students volunteered for Farm Day. But in order to volunteer for Farm Day, they had to send an email to the coordinator they had to talk to the coordinator about what they wanted to help with, consider how they wanted to be involved, how that would impact them, how that would impact community. And then after that experience, reflect on it. And through that experience, some of them now are considering, okay, what are other ways that I can get involved with these activities and continue my experience? Some of them are going, wow, okay, I tried this new thing. And I have learned that this is not something that at this time in my life, I want to continue to experience, but that impacts their further choices. So one and done, taking some awareness on that, on that phrase. An activity without measurable goals, okay? Those learning outcomes, that's where that comes into play. Before a student engages in an experience, they need to enter it into manage back. They need to name it. They need to give, uh, select those outcomes. What is it that they are trying to achieve by this experience? And it's not that they're trying to get their best time in whatever event it is that they are going to compete in in a big need. It's that they want to improve their overall physical wellness, increase their skills and their strength and their growth, okay? An activity for which participants get paid is not CAS. An activity that does not show initiative or reflect the seven learner outcomes. An activity that involves proselytizing or that is divisive. Okay, so these are the things that CAS is not, um, which in some ways is a little bit easier to answer than what is CAS. A lot of times when students are first coming to me, I will say to them, okay, is it an IB class? Okay, do you get paid for it? No. Okay, let's start to then figure out, does this fall under one of our three strands? Do we have measurable outcomes? Is there a supervisor that is aware of our involvement in this experience? And we go from there. Okay. Cast requirements and timelines, right? Because we, these are the things that we need to know. So there are three required meetings with the cast coordinator, myself. One at the beginning of junior fall. I am happy to report that our juniors I think all but 12 have met with me. And of those 12, nine have their appointments scheduled. Now, um, the three that don't have their appointments scheduled have received a few reminders from me. Uh, we do try to keep up with them. We know that they are often overwhelmed at the beginning of this experience. Um, so we'll, we'll be touching base with them. Three required meetings, one at the beginning of junior fall to help them understand what this process is, what is expected of them and to get them started. For a lot of them, this is the first time they've used Manage Back, especially in this way. So getting them comfortable on this new platform is an important step. And then understanding that a lot of the things that they are already engaged in are eligible for these requirements. What we're asking them to consider is how they choose these things, why, is, why they choose these things, and then what impact are they having. So we start that process at the beginning of this year. At the end of this year, we'll have another official interview and we'll talk about what things they engaged in this year, um, how that impacted them, 
what things they found great value in, what things they're going to continue into their senior year. And we'll also talk about what things they might then consider extending or growing into a CAS project, what that experience will look like. We'll have an unofficial meeting once more at the beginning of senior fall to just get them on track, make sure they don't have any questions and that they remember the experience from junior year. And then at the end of their senior spring, we'll meet again and reflect on what this whole process has been like for them, um, what awareness they've gained from considering their experiences through this IB lens. Three to four hours per week throughout the school year is what is expected as far as time commitment. Each student must participate in experiences that fall under each strand at least twice per year, a minimum of two times. What you'll find is that your students um, have many more than that, but that's our minimum. So when we say strand, we're talking about creativity, activity, and service, that they focus on each learning outcome at least once each year, that they complete a CAS project, that they complete reflections, and that they have solicited reviews. So when a student walks into my room to discuss CAS for the first time, we construct an experience. Okay, what is something that you are participating in at this time that you think would be eligible for CAS? Sometimes it's a sport, sometimes it's a club, sometimes it's an ensemble. As the choir teacher, I'm gonna say chamber singers, junior year, okay. And I ask them to identify it with the school year because their goals are gonna change. Okay, so chamber singers, that falls under creativity, okay. About how many hours this year do you think you're going to participate in this experience? It's an estimate, we put that in there. Okay, who's your supervisor going to be? Who's the adult that's aware of your experience? That's Mrs. Sample, okay? And you need her email address. And since we're talking about this now, you're asking her if she'll be your supervisor for this experience. Awesome. What are your goals for this year, for this experience as an IB learner? Are you going to take on new challenges and new skills? Are you going to work collaboratively with your classmates? Are you going to have opportunities for global engagement and awareness of how this activity is shared across the globe? Okay. Those might be some things that you would select. And then throughout the experience, they're going to write reflections. At the end of the experience, they are going to request a supervisor review. All of that's done online. Their supervisor gets an email from manage back saying, hey, this student says that they did these things. And the supervisor has the opportunity to say, yes, they engaged in these learning outcomes and it was a joy to work with them. They can write comments about the student's experience. And that's what a whole CAS experience looks like for your students throughout the junior and senior year. Okay, so now that we've talked about CAS, and CAS is all about all of the things that they choose to do. Now we can talk about the extended essay, which is an opportunity in their choice of study. So the extended essay is a maximum of 4,000 words of creative and critical personal research evaluation. Yes, yes it is. So when we say a maximum of 4,000 words, what we mean is that the external evaluator who is going to read this essay will stop at 4,000 words. And as soon as we tell the students that there's a maximum of 4,000 words, they say, okay, well, what's the minimum? There is no minimum. What we recommend is a minimum of 2,500 words, somewhere in there, which is a pretty big ballpark. Okay. This is an opportunity for our students to investigate a research question of individual interest. So what I always ask students is, okay, in your classes that you have selected for your IB diploma, is there a subject that you wish you guys had more time to talk about, but based on the curriculum, you just couldn't dive as deeply or something that came up in earlier classes that you hope is gonna come up in that curriculum? What's something that catches your interest that drives you to study this subject? Because you have the opportunity to dive deep here. It also familiarizes students with the independent research and writing skills expected at a university. This is a huge piece. I think those of us that have attended colleges and universities know that there are times where at the beginning of the semester you get the syllabus and it says, okay, and at the end there's a paper due. And that might be the most you hear about it. So this is an opportunity for our students to engage in those skills. Um, and it also is an opportunity for them to explore this in an independent way. They, you will see from us 
uh, because you'll all be expected to sign it. The contract that we give them, which outlines a pretty thorough timeline, what we expect them to complete at what time, when those pieces are expected to be done. Uh, we give them opportunities to engage in some supervised research, but the majority of this work they do on their own. And that is very daunting for some of them, but we try to remind them that is it is an opportunity. Go ahead and do next slide. Okay. So the extended essay um, is about the process of writing the essay. It's not just about the information that they are exploring, which is a huge piece of it, right? But it's about the process of writing the essay. So how do you choose a subject, a topic, a research question? How do you work through that research? And as you go through that process, how does it shape your perspective on that issue, your awareness? And maybe as you're going through that research, maybe you go down a rabbit hole, maybe you take a different turn, maybe you hit a dead end and completely change course. But as much as the essay is about the essay itself, it is also about the process. And we see that because IB requires three specific reflections from students during their essay process. Those reflections are specifically scheduled. We give them guiding questions. Those reflections are written in ManageBack, that same platform that we're using for CAS. And they're not long. All three reflections together have a total of 500 words, but there's a specific set of questions that show that we've gone through a process, that we've taken time to reflect and really research, and that that has impacted our, our position, our awareness on these issues, okay? So that exploration piece is also super important. Um, students are given a subject guide that says, here is what an essay in history looks like. Here is what it should be about. Here are recommended sources when you are looking into history. Here are resources that are primary. Here are sources that are secondary. And how do we get there? And we will also have sessions with Ms. Michaelstad, our fab fabulous, fabulous librarian, to introduce students to various and sundry search engines and give them some very specific subject guidance as well as needed. Independence and collaboration. So students choose their subject, their topic, and their research question, and they choose a supervisor to work with. Often this is a teacher at Meridian, but it doesn't have to be. It needs to be a teacher or staff member from Falls Church City Schools so that they have access to our platforms. And this is someone who they think they will be able to have fruitful conversations with about this subject that they've chosen. So sometimes we see the particular teacher that teaches the subject that they've selected. Sometimes we see a teacher who taught that at an earlier grade level, some of our 10th and 9th grade teachers, or even some of our middle school teachers that have a lit of fire in these kids that they have continued to hold through until their junior year. Sometimes it's their counselor who they have a really great relationship with, and they know that that counselor has particular knowledge in an area that they want to explore. So there's a lot of freedom in that selection of supervisor. Okay, extended essay timeline. All right, so right now I have introduced the extended essay to your students and some of them are excited and some of them are nervous. Next week we meet again and we start to talk about, okay, selecting a subject. They will receive that contract on paper. It's already in PDF in Schoology form in their uh, Schoology class. We'll talk about selecting a subject. So we're talking about the IB subject. What course does this fall under? We highly strongly recommend that they choose a subject in which they, that they are taking and that they're taking in their junior year so that they understand the IB perspective and the IB language associated with that subject. We will take them through selecting a subject, a topic, focusing in on a research question, so that by January, they can put in their official proposal, and that proposal goes into Manage Back. January through March, we will have sessions that talk about research, that talk about resources. They will also have their first reflection with their supervisor, where they can say, hey, here's the topic I've selected, um, and they can talk about what challenges they might face, and often that is in that research portion. Where am I going to go to get the information that I'm looking for? 
Okay. Uh, March to April, we're going to ask them to come up with an outline. So hopefully they're coming to the end of their research time and they're coming up with that outline. And then they're writing their rough draft April to May. Their rough draft is due to their supervisor in June of their junior year. Over the summer, they edit their rough draft and they turn in their final essay in September of their senior year. And they finish their reflection process in October of their senior year. This is the timeline that we lay out for them. This is the goal. Um, and the students that engage in this timeline, then in their senior year, are able to focus on their college applications, on their senior coursework, which is extensive. We try to set this up in such a way that the extended essay is not hanging over their heads during that senior year time. So this is the timeline that we lay out for them. That's a lot of information and there's a lot more. Uh, let me see if I can hit some of these questions in the chat over here. Okay, jobs do not count as CAS uh, because students receive payment for them. So anything that you receive payment for does not count as CAS. Anything that you receive IB course credit for does not count as CAS. Now, there might be something that happens in a class that stirs interest, that is an impetus to then take something on, or there might be an extension of a project that becomes service or creativity or action, but actual jobs and actual coursework for which they receive course credit do not count as CAS. The CAS project is due at the end of the whole portfolio process, which will be in April, beginning of April of their senior year. Um, the CAS project is usually done either in the summer between the school years or sometime during the senior year. The CAS project absolutely can be the same project as a Girl Scout or Boy Scout working on a gold and Eagle award. And those are excellent examples of the levels of initiative and planning that we expect to see behind our CAS projects. Any other questions for me on CAS or extended essay? And I know it's a lot of information. Um, your students are all in a Schoology course that's called IB Diploma Candidates Class of 2023 or 2022. Uh, so there are PDFs of the guide for the CAS, the guide for EE, the contract, all of those are in that course, as well as some key dates. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ms. Sample, for taking a look at the other two pieces of the core. So it's my turn and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna race through mine, hopefully not too fast. Certainly you'll be able to ask questions of me at the end. So beyond the core, of course, an IB diploma requires coursework and the associated exams or assessments that accompany those uh, six. Now in IB world, we have higher level and standard level. You can see on the screen, there's recommended teaching hours for both. Standard level courses here uh, can be a one-year course. We have global politics as a one-year, economics is a one-year standard level, but we also do have some two-year standard levels such as English language and literature. That's a two-year. Uh, environmental systems and societies, that's a two-year standard level. So some of our courses do encompass a two-year standard level. If IB had it their way and could control American schools the, as rogue as we are, they would have all subjects two years, but they understand graduation requirements do dictate the necessity for some one year standard level coursework. And you can meet the teaching hours in a year to be sure. Now, higher level subjects always occur over a two year period, and, and they're gonna have extra assessments in some cases. Global Politics SL has two exam papers that students complete, but the HL, global politics, which we don't teach, actually has a third exam part. So there is more content and more in-depth understanding of a subject that is uh, examined at the higher level. So higher levels, we always use the term HL and SL, but know that for students pursuing the diploma, they will need to have three HL uh, courses and three SL. There, is a chance, I'll, I'll explain, there's actually some modification to that. And it's also interesting, some of our, our juniors are in SL exam courses right now. IB Business, for example, one year SL as a junior, or IB Economics, for example. You actually will, those students will take the SL exam this year and will hold that score in the bank for, for the student to account towards one of their six exams. So students can take no exams in the junior year, 
or one or two, but no more than two that count towards a diploma. Um, let me follow that up also by saying some students are taking four higher levels. Now that IB requires three, they allow up to four. And this slide you know, says, well, if you do four, then you need two SLs. Again, you need your six exams. If there's any advantage to taking four HLs, I don't know. It's a student choice. Certainly there's gonna be a little more rigor in their two year schedule with a fourth HL. But on the practical side, if you're looking at potential college credit, HL exams tend to have a better chance for HL credit. So there's a greater chance of having a fourth exam go with that route for you. Also know that when you're looking at receiving an IB diploma, the first bar you've got to hit is they're going to add up all your exam points. And the first bar you've got to hit is your three of your HLs. And I'll say if you only have three, then all three. But if you have four, three of those HLs have to equal 12 or more points. IB exams are scored on a scale of one to seven. Seven is the highest. And if you get an average of four points on six exams, you'll hit 24 points. That'll get you a diploma. But of the HL exams, your top three HLs have to equal 12 or more points. So if you do take four HLs, you could, you could argue, well, you have another shot of putting at least a mix of three together that equal 12 or more. But most of our students do three HLs. We do have you know, more than a handful taking four HLs. Student choice, three are required, four are possible. Now, we have a lot of different uh, courses at each group. So groups one through six, this is IB jargon. Group one is gonna be your first language. Of course, we have our HL literature course. Some of your students are in that and the very popular language and literature SL curriculum running two years uh, also. There's one student in the junior class and another one in the senior class who are fluent in another language. And they're actually in something called self-taught. Uh, it's not common. I misspelled literature I'm seeing on the screen now, uh, but that is not a common exam and I probably won't spend any time with that directly. For the two parents that relates to for their student, you can uh, reach out to me directly. Most students in fact do a group two. If you do the self-taught in English literature, you don't have to do a group two, but most students, all students except two this uh, year are doing either Spanish, French, or Mandarin as part of their diploma. You will need a group three subject. You can see our options there. Know that psychology SL is a one year, but the HL of course is a two year. Um, global politics, economics, business, all one year options can be done the junior year or the senior year um, or not at all. If they already have a, a group three. Group four, you see our sciences there. Um, again, the HLs tend to all be, of course, our two year subjects. Uh, the one exception there is environmental systems for the SL courses. That actually is a two year SL. Design, however, SL one year. Physics, SL one year. Computer science, SL one year. Chemistry, SL one year. But we have some options there for students to meet a group four exam. And they'll need at least one of those in order to be eligible for the IB diploma. For math, they'll need one of those exams. We have three different course offerings there uh, in HL and SL for the applications course and, and the interpretations course is SL only, SL only. So, and the art electives, we, we do have film studies, we have music, we have theater, uh, but know that uh, not, you do not necessarily have to take an art elective and, and some students are not. And I'll go through that scenario in just a moment. So for example, you're taking one of these courses in the junior and the senior year. Uh, the students in that top row are obviously getting one of their three higher level exams, uh, but the very popular language and literature is a nice course as well. I'm not gonna belabor you with all the details. Literature has 13 area, or liter pieces of uh, literature that are studied. Lang and Lett has only four, but they study other ways that the language is used in media, advertisements, newspapers, textbooks, and the like. So the use of language course. And of course, we have our three languages that we offer here. Some of your uh, students, every year we give the ab initio exam. So really these courses I'm showing you here that are labeled IB Spanish B, typically or French B or Chinese B, typically they're the students getting into their fifth and sixth year of study to be really well uh, versed and ready for the B level exam. 
But sometimes we get a, a student who's only in Spanish three, let's say in grade 11 or French three, and that's okay. They'll move into the fourth year of study in their senior year. And if they're not really fluent enough for the B-level language exam, we give them uh, an IB ab initio exam. It's designed for a student who just hasn't quite reached the B-level uh, uh, of fluency in the IB world for whatever reason. It's a decision made at the school level between the student, the teacher, and the teacher ultimately says the student is ready for B level or the student is not ready for B level when in fact they have yet to reach year five or six by the time they have uh, reached uh, graduation. Now group three, you can see we have uh, in the blue, we have two course sequences that run two years. And in the gray, we have our one-year courses. All of them um, can be done either the junior or the senior year. Uh, note that the economics course in blue, it does meet the VDOE requirements for the economics and personal finance course. Some students have done that already online over the summer or in their sophomore year, and that's great. And they didn't plan on taking IB economics, and that's great too. But for any of you who are in IB economics and you haven't done the personal finance, um, if you're in IB economics, you actually don't have to double up with the personal finance course from VDOE. Economics actually will meet that requirement. Here are group four subjects. And remember, we have to get one of these in. Some students will do two, but we have to get at least one in for a diploma. I highlighted the one in red. Know that all the ones you see here will count towards the VDOE requirements, the Virginia requirements for the four subjects or the four science credits you need for graduation to get an advanced studies diploma from Virginia. They all work, even computer science now, but design tech is not recognized by Virginia as a, a lab science course. Uh, so students can still take it. It's a wonderful class. It's gotten very popular with our teacher, uh, either a two-year level or a one-year level, but just know that it doesn't count toward the state science credit. It is a IB science credits. We're working, we're trying to meet two different folks here on this. Our three math courses are all two year sequences. Um, and we have our one higher level, then we have that same course at the standard level. And then we have a whole different course, the applications course at standard level that we offer here that will run over the course of two years. Now, some of our students I mentioned are very uh, advanced in math. They moved into one of these courses in their sophomore year, and they actually will take an SL exam uh, if it's the SL course in their junior year. If by chance we're looking at an HL1, what's, I'm sorry. Oh. So if you're moving into the HL course as a sophomore, and I believe we have one student last year who did that, I'm sorry, two years ago, she she was an HL last year as a junior, the HL2 as a junior. Now in that situation, that exam cannot count towards an IB diploma in the junior year. So that student actually took the HL exam in the junior year, you can do that, but we have to declare it an extra. And that student is going to retake the exam as a senior so it will now count towards the IB diploma. That unfortunately is an IB rule, no HL exams in the junior year, but we always find a way around it for the uh, few students who are moving that quickly through math before they get to grade 11 and 12. Now, group six, this is this year's six exam. So it's gotta be one of these arts and they're very popular classes. And a lot of students move in this direction, either for a two year HL towards one of their three HL requirements, or sometimes they do it for a single year. You can see them in gray and they'll do that either the junior or senior year. But note, not all students take a true art. Uh, I wish they would, but they don't have to. Many students are taking a second science, that's group four, or they're taking a second uh, social studies, individuals and societies course. Maybe they're taking IB history and IB business. And that's another group three, and that works too. So the group six subjects, the true arts, do not necessarily have to be in an IB diploma package. The six exam can be, as you see in red, a second subject from groups two, three, or four. Now, very important to understand is one thing I love about IB is the way that we assess our students. Yes, there's a sit down exam in May, and it's usually a paper one, paper two, sometimes a paper three, depending on the subject, papers one, two, 
think of them as parts of the exam. We call them papers in IB. But beyond that, students have to also complete their internal assessments. And you can see them listed up here. And they count anywhere, depending on which course it is, 20 to 40% of the overall IB score. Now, unlike the AP exams, which are just the May exams, IB scores and count the internal assessment as well. These are done in class. They are scored by the teacher. The scores are uploaded to IB to see the distribution of scores awarded by the teacher. And then IB asks for a sample of eight to 12 of the class uh, internal assessments. In some ways, they're not really even grading the students IB. They're really grading the teacher to make sure we're staying true to the grading standards and the rubrics produced by IB that govern the work of these internal assessments. They're done at various parts in the school year. We really try to stretch them out well. I know, for example, uh, our language and literature, individual oral, we tend to do that in the junior year. And, and language uh, acquisition, we tend to do those in December of the senior year. So we, we do try to stretch them out as best what we can so we're not getting all the internal assessments all happening in April of the senior year or of the one exam year. So the award of an IB diploma. So let's take all that in, into in context. Over here on the left, yes, you got to complete your core. The extended essay must be completed and it must receive a score of D or better. We would love them all to be A's, but at least a D or better has to be a passing grade. The TOK course also has that externally assessed essay along with the exhibition. That course must have a grade of D or better. Remember, TOK is scored A to D. Got to have a passing grade there. CAS activities have to be monitored by Ms. Sample and then ultimately signed off by uh, Ms. Sample and myself in April of the senior year. So the CAS activities have to be in place. Now, once we know that's all in place, the IB diploma is now going to be awarded on points. I had mentioned the scores of the exams are one to seven points, seven being the highest. And we're going to need 24 or more points on those six IB exams. There's some bonus points I'll show you in a minute, a minute you can get from your TOK and EE grades. But you need 24 points overall. 12 of those points have to be on HL exams. Uh, sometimes we have a student not get the IB diploma. They've completed the core on the left. They've completed the six exams, but their higher level exams might have only equal 10 or 11 points. And right away, that already is step one, and IB will not award a diploma if we have not scored 12 or more on three HL exams. Of course, you can't get grades of one on any exam, and that is an extremely rare grade. That's a student walked in the exam, put their name on, and walked out. I don't know. You don't see that. Oh, really. And there could be no grade of N. Now, what that means is if you remember that last slide I showed you with all those internal assessments, let's say I sit for all my exams and I, I get six or seven on all of them and I'm feeling good. But if I did not turn in my internal assessment for my biology class, that's part of my diploma, um, I get a grade of N in biology, regardless of how well I do on the exams in May. So all those internal assessments have to be completed and students must sit for the exam. And once IB has all that, they then can award potentially a diploma, provided there's the point spread that we've talked about. But no grade of N, meaning no missing internal assessments and no missing exam days. Now, I mentioned that those IB, uh, TLK, and extended essay can give, uh, components can give you some extra points. And here you see all, all the uh, point matrix for that. So if I get only a C on my extended essay, but I get, um, I don't know, a C also on my TLK, not stellar grades, but I actually can get a bonus point for that. And that could come in helpful. And I'll show you a couple examples here. So for example, here's an IB transcript. So we're gonna to look to see if a student's gonna get an IB diploma. We're assuming the core has been successfully completed, TOK, extended essay, and CAS. And here the student got four points each on their HL exams, that's that 12 threshold. Got some more points on the standard level exams, clearly over 24 points. And they actually did quite well on their essays. In this case, the bonus points weren't necessarily needed for the award of a diploma. We had enough already with our exam scores. But again, without there, at least if we get a D or better on both those essays, we're going to get a diploma in this situation. 
but I see this happen every year too. You know, here we have our 12 points on the higher levels, but standard levels came up a bit short. In fact, our diploma is only sitting at 22 points on exam scores, but the student did a really nice job in TOK and the extended essay, they did okay too. I mean, they got to see on that matrix, that's two points. And notice in this scenario, the student actually is going to get an IB diploma. They have 12 points on the higher levels and with the bonus points, they've reached that magic mark of 24 points. I see this happen every year. And when I talk to students about, well, you know, what if I don't do really well on the TOK? What if I don't really do well with it? Well, I, I tell them all the time, I see every year where that makes the difference. And, and that's uh, something to be considered when you think about how much effort you wanna put into TOK and the extended essay. So in review quickly, right? So we've got uh, our three subjects at higher level, our three subjects at standard level, maybe four at higher levels we said, and all the pieces of the core are in place. And ideally we're gonna be able to get um, the, the IB diploma. And having said all that, I think you're going to still with me, Josh. Is that correct, Mr. Mr. Singer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So can you look in the chat? I don't feel like pulling it up. And if you just shoot out the questions and let me uh, shout out an answer, or if you want to try your expertise and just let me correct you if you're wrong, that's fine, too. So I, I think at this point, any questions um, that have come into the chat uh, were either addressed during the TOK and CAS okay. sections. Uh, we had one come in a little bit later that said, is the CAS project a must to do for the IB diploma? And how does it impact college applications? And yes, the CAS project is an expectation there. Uh, and as we've mentioned before, TOK, CAS and extended essay um, meeting those requirements are necessary for a student to earn uh, the IB diploma. And then in regards to college applications on the positive side, it looks great as a potential <clears throat> uh, college essay uh, writing about your CAS project. Um, and we do encourage uh, all students to follow the suggested timeline so it doesn't interrupt their work on college applications in their senior year. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I've always said, and, and I've known this just talking to admissions officer now, taking my kids to all these college visits is, you know, the college admissions officers are, of course, looking at the rigor of your high school transcript accompanied with the GPA. But the next most important thing is, you know, what are you doing outside the classroom, your student activity record? And I would argue any student who goes for the IB diploma and kind of pushes their limits a little bit on CAS, they have a lot to write about in an essay, as, as Mr. Singer mentioned, but certainly just padding up, here's what I do outside the class. And it speaks very highly to you as a potential applicant for that school, because admissions officers always tell you, they wanna see what you're gonna do besides studying for the coursework we're offering you, what can you do to add to campus life? And CAS speaks well to that. Are there any questions still there, Mr. Singer? The, the only other questions we're getting are just uh, for people's future reference. Yes, we will be sharing a link to an FAQ where we've captured the questions we've heard tonight, as well as some of the answers that were provided. Um, and in that FAQ will be a link, uh, already is a link to the slide deck that uh, Mr. Coast used tonight. And we'll share the link to the recording uh, of this uh, presentation uh, in that FAQ as well. Mr. Singer, you asked, on the radio, you have a very nice radio voice. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, what, so, uh, a parent just asked, what is the average IB diploma score achieved in the past years? That's a great question. So every year we are averaging about 30 to 32 points. Last year, I think we actually averaged 33 points. And last year we had a student, there's 45 points possible. If you get sevens on every exam, plus your three bonus points, it's 45. We had a student get 44 points last year, which is phenomenal. But yes, last year we averaged 33. We typically average 30, 31. So our students do quite well. Last year we had 50 students going for the diploma, 48 got it. Uh, and again, it was the higher level exams for a couple of students who didn't quite uh, get the diploma. I will also say this, and, and when that happens, it's of course a disappointment and I get it, but I will guarantee you those students are much better prepared for college having gone through this two-year experience 
hands down. The Plama certainly would have been super sweet. I don't want to downplay that, but they're much better prepared for college, which ultimately is what we're trying to do with this program. Um, there's a question regarding the CAS project. Um, and if they work on it over the summer, who would be the supervisor? Correct me if I'm wrong. It, it could be whomever they are working with. The supervisor does not necessarily need to be an employee of the, the school system. That's Correct. Correct. CAS supervisors, um, the only stipulation on CAS supervisors, whether it be for an experience or a project, is that they not be a parent of the student. So not a direct family member, um, but other than that, um, anyone can choose to, they can ask other people to be supervisors. And that's part of why it's so important that they have a conversation with that person and ask them to be their supervisor before they just list them and manage back and then end up asking them for a review. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, Ms. Sample, but I know we didn't have students in school up until like March of last year. So our current seniors, Yes. Or, yeah. So what we did, aren't we making some exceptions for the seniors in the months? Uh... Yes, absolutely. So seniors uh, from la any uh, CAS experiences from last year, um, there was a potential for parents to be supervisors during quarantine during COVID time last year. So that was on a case by case basis for our current juniors. That uh, stipulation is no longer in place. Yes. Uh, Mr. Coase, a question for you. Uh, when do you, we, uh, when would a family, when, when would a student receive the results of their IB uh, exams, knowing whether or not they've earned the diploma? Yes, a great question. They come out July 5th every year, July 5th. So, so notice that when they walk across the stage, I had a student ask me this the other day, well, what if I don't get the diploma? Do I not graduate? Remember, we're really working for two different uh, um, governing bodies, the credentials for two. One is Virginia, and certainly on graduation day, senior year, they're going to walk across the stage with a medal that recognizes them from our school as being a, a IB diploma candidate. And of course, they'll get their Virginia diploma. Now, in July 6, when the scores come out, we will know if they got a second diploma awarded out of Geneva, Switzerland, and that's the IB diploma. So we won't know till July 6. But you know, I always tell students, and you know, and this is the same with college board exams in your senior year, um, the exam scores don't get you into college and they don't keep you out. Uh, most colleges don't see exam scores until you're applying, I'm sorry, after you have applied and been accepted. All our students, for the most part, are going to know by May 1st which college they're going to, uh, and we won't even see exam scores till July. Colleges won't see them until the very end of July when we um, ship them out per the student's request to certain schools. So, yeah, scores don't get you out or get you in or keep you out, uh, but they can help get college credit and certainly can give you that reward of the diploma. And then uh, following just a quick follow up question, because I think it relates to um, uh, another question we have here, uh, which is info on the impact of IB scores at major universities in the area. Um, so if those exam scores come back at the higher end, uh, students can then apply to have uh, credits earned at the collegiate level. What's that look like here in our Commonwealth? And yeah, so um, our 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 schools in Virginia are very favorable to IB. We are, I think, the fourth largest state with the number of IB diploma programs in the United States. So IB schools, I mean, schools in this uh, Commonwealth know IB well. Every university sets their own standards uh, for giving college credit. Um, UVA tends to be very stingy. They want scores of five and over on HL exams only. But having said that, they gobble up IB diploma candidates in the admissions process. They know what they're getting and that's awesome. Virginia Tech is a little bit more lenient. You can get scores at higher level on fours uh, and higher. So they're a bit more lenient and we like that. VCU hands down, if you have a student interested in VCU, great school in Richmond, they are by far the most uh, generous. Even SL scores will get credit at VCU. William & Mary has, I think, seven SL exams now they're giving credit to. Um, and of course, all the HL exams, if this, the point total is high enough on that exam. So it's hit or miss. I, you know, I would say college credit is awesome. I will also say there's other benefits to uh, 
getting the IB diploma and the scores associated, even if you're not getting college credit, often they will get you admittance to an honors program. You need to advocate for yourself. Um, so I talk to students about advocating for themselves when they're heading off to college that, you know, use your IB diploma as leverage. And it's, uh, as a teacher in the IB uh, program, both here and at my prior school, um, it's always fun in August and September to get the emails from the college freshmen who finished the diploma and talk about how comfortable they feel in their courses, how prepared they feel, and how panicked their friends uh, who were only in AP courses uh, with a different mindset and a different approach uh, feel when they're assigned uh, these papers, these research assignments, uh, and a lot of these individually managed tests. So I'm so happy right now I have permission to bring back our IB diploma candidates January 4th. I hope the pandemic doesn't do anything to change that. But exactly what you said, Mr. Singer, I'll be bringing back the IB diploma recipients from the class of 21. Uh, we give them the diplomas themselves uh, in the auditorium and then we break out into some um, panel discussions where our current IB juniors and seniors and a lot of our sophomores are invited to come in and just hear from these people uh, how well the IB diploma program prepared them and what their first semester of college is really like. Are there no more questions at this time? Um, I want to thank uh, you. If, oh. if I could just maybe do one last question, and that was, what yeah. is the link to the FAQ? So once we have the recording uh, put into the FAQ, uh, Mr. Coase will be sharing that out with the same email distribution that got you the Zoom link here for tonight. Yes. I want to thank everybody for taking time to hear uh, what your kids are going through. I will say, I know you all are great support for your, your students just being there. I know this program can be a bit stressful, but I've always said this, it's good for students to go through this type of rigor when they're under the safety of your roof. They've got their support mechanisms of the family. They got the support mechanisms of all these other IB diploma candidates who have the same teachers and the same requirements. And many of them, they might've been in elementary school and they've gone through this city together all these years. So there's so many support mechanisms now to experience this type of rigor going off to college, a lot of those support mechanisms are gone and they're starting fresh. But as Mr. Singer said, the students who come back, who reach out and email to their teachers, all sing the same happy story that, hey, it was difficult the last two years, but I feel so prepared for success and this next step of my journey. I would just like to thank everybody for attending. You have had my uh, phone number and my email. I do prefer email. Um, but either way, if you have questions beyond what we are uh, presented tonight or individual questions about your student, of course, reach out to me and I'll get back to you and we'll get that question answered. Ms. Uh, Sample, Mr. Singer, thank you so much for your expertise. And at this time, I'm gonna say good night to everybody and end the meeting and I'm gonna stop the recording. We'll have this available by Friday on our webpage. Good night.